Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is May 2nd and this is my weekly shop update. So I hope everyone is having a great week. It has been a little chaotic here for me. I'm going to be uh, heading out to the UK this evening and uh, between my trip to the UK and then following that I'll be back for like two days and then I'm going to Weekend with Wood. So over the next like uh, three weeks I'll be home for two days. <laughs> so I've been kind of getting ready for that getting things squared away and uh, just mentally prepared to be gone for so long. So it's been a little bit on the hectic side. So I hope everyone enjoyed the Northern Woods video that I posted last week. It's always great to be able to share that level of craftsmanship with everyone. I know personally being there, it's just so beneficial to see what everybody else is working on and uh, you kind of walk away inspired. So hopefully if you weren't able to attend in person, the video kind of uh, gives you a little bit of inspiration and again a big thank you to everyone who took the time out of their their day to be on camera telling us about their pieces it was uh, very much appreciated <laughs> so while the show was going on Scott Grove was in town and he is or he was a judge for this year's Northern Woods show and he stopped by and we did a little bit of a veneering demonstration video so actually hang on a second back up a second. So before he arrived, certainly Wood sent out uh, some veneer for us to demonstrate with. We didn't end up using it all, but we have a few packs here. So this is the stuff that we did use, which uh, I, I lost the thing that tells me the name is. It's some kind of rosewood-like species, uh, but we use that to do this uh, radial veneer. So it's a bunch of wedges in a radial pattern, and it's going to be cut out into a circle. So this is just a blank piece of demonstration wood and then we just have a standard boring veneer on the back there so got a cool demo of uh, how to do a radial veneer an eight piece radial veneer uh, out of this oh, it's not even listed on here it's some kind of rosewood-esque type of wood which is super cool so I have this whole pack of veneer to play with in the future as well as all of the remaining bits of veneer from the uh, the pack that went into that radial demo and and I'm gonna break this this walnut burl <laughs> so maybe I'll be doing some veneer projects here in the future because I have all this beautiful veneer to play with it's uh it's great this is beautiful stuff and there's like a whole <laughs> Just burl. <laughs> so play with some veneer. Anyway, so we shot this great little demonstration video on doing a radial veneer. And when I get back, I'm going to finish this up and make this into a circle and finish up that video. So look for that at uh, probably like in a month. <laughs> so thanks again to Scott Grove who came in and spent most of uh, last Saturday with me here in the shop shooting that video. The other big thing that happened this week is happening behind me. As you can see, the tool cabinet is donezo. So it's all loaded up, everything is totally finished, and it's got some lights, and I am pretty darn happy with the way this thing turned out. Now I don't really know how often the doors are going to be closed, but it feels good to know there's some sweet uh, crotch veneer panels on the front of this case. <laughs> So now I have a way to store and organize all my planes and the two tills I think look pretty darn awesome. They're a good central focal point of the whole case and we got plenty of other little nooks and crannies to store things in. Uh, the saw till is really nice. You can just grab a saw, pull it out, get to work and do whatever you want to do. Uh, I've got drawers for storage of small stuff and these double doors I think are going to work out really nicely. I still have a lot of real estate. And, uh, and all that stuff. So there's still some room on my primary area. So this is where I have all the things I use the most often. And then on the interior of the doors are all my secondary things, which I don't really use very often. So this is all stuff that might only come out once in a while, but for any project that I'll be doing, it's gonna be pretty much anything on the inner doors is gonna be used for every project. On this side, I have even more free space for future stuff so I have all this room here as well as most of this panel as well so 
that's the way I plan for future growth is to just leave a lot of extra space and make the cabinet bigger than it really needs to be. <laughs> and also as I was laying this thing out, I didn't really want things to be super cluttered and packed really close together. I really wanted things to have a little bit of breathing room around them. And I didn't want the whole cabinet to be this like uh, practice in how much stuff can I cram into as small a space as possible type of operation. So having a little breathing room around things makes it a lot easier to actually get the tools in and out and just feels less restricted and cluttered. So maybe someday I'll get to that point when I have twice as many tools as I have now, but I don't know. I'm not, I highly doubt I'm going to have that many tools, <laughs> which we'll see, but <laughs> I think I'll be good for uh, quite a long time. So this thing is all done over in the guild. I posted the last video this week. So that is 18 instructional videos as well as the plans on how to make this cabinet that uh, you can check out if you want to. I will be editing the uh, overview summary video thing. That'll be when I get back because, uh, yeah, I haven't had time to work on that yet. <laughs> so I think that's all I've been up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is an epoxy river desk by Al. The base is made from walnut and walnut plywood. The drawer fronts are ambrosia maple and the top is bacote with walnut breadboard ends with the blue river drawing the two bacote slabs. Next is a schoolhouse desk by Dan. The desktop is made from spalted red oak and the backrest is made from western red cedar. The desk is joined with Morrison tenons and there was a perfectly placed knot hole that holds his daughter's Duressa pencil perfectly. Next is a set of cupcake stands by Mike. Mike made these cupcake stands among a number of other things for his daughter's wedding. Last this week is a blanket chest by Steve. Steve made his blanket chest for a fundraising auction for the Children's Advocacy Center. The chest is made of cherry with some figure and inclusion. The bottom is red cedar and the case is lined with raw aromatic cedar. So I'm very much looking forward to getting over to the UK and starting on the guitar build. Uh, on the guitar blank video, I got a lot of questions on like what exactly I'm making. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I was serious in that video. I know nothing about guitars, making guitars, anything about guitars. So as far as I know, through deductive reasoning, I'm making a solid body electric guitar. That's all I know. That's it. <laughs> also had a few comments about the species selection for the body, making it uh, too heavy. Keep in mind the body is made from silver maple, not hard maple. I think most people assume it was hard maple or they're more familiar with hard maple. Soft maple or silver maple is a soft maple. It's got the same rough density as like uh, you know, mahogany or something around that area. So like have a medium density. So it should be about the same as any other uh, guitar. Also, if you happen to be in that area, uh, we're having a meetup at Crimson Guitars next Wednesday. And I'll leave you some information to that down in the description. Otherwise, I will see you at Maker Central on the 11th and 12th. I'll be at the Triton booth. Stop by, say hi, Let's check out the guitar. Hopefully I have it done there. It doesn't, uh, hopefully it works out enough where I actually have something to be, something, hopefully it works out well enough <laughs> that I actually have something to show at the booth. And if I don't see you there in the UK, maybe I'll see you at Weekend with Wood the, uh, the following weekend. I'll have my two sessions there, uh, one on uh, working with Live Edge Lumber and the other on dealing with defects. So those will be repeated twice. So it's four total sessions for me, two individual topics. Woo! <laughs> so for the two days that I'm back, I'll be working on my visual aids for those classes. So that's gonna be my next three weeks. <laughs> I have no idea uh, what's gonna be happening for three weeks. <laughs> so I think that's about it for this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I've talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.